students today we will discuss the recall for this neat pg for pathology so the paper was simple and most of the topics were repeated so we always say that if your basics are strong then any question you can easily attempt right so students first question a patient presented with features of dic with low platelet count so two hints given to you right in the clinical history dic most commonly which aml variant is associated with dic AML M3 or acute promyelocytic leukemia because of the release of various prothrombotic factors. So yes, one hint was DIC. Second hint, thrombocytopenia or low platelet count, right? Thrombocytopenia usually manifests in the form of bleeding. So they could have given that the patient comes with the history of bleeding, right? Or they can ask you that low platelet count is there following finding was seen so can i say it is predominantly an image based question because you can make the diagnosis easily just by looking at the image so let's have a look at the image right so i can see a cell definitely it's a large size cell okay so a large size cell with a large nucleus very high nc ratio the nucleus almost occupies whole of the cell so can i say this is a large size cell with large size nucleus or can i say there is high nc ratio now student this is a blast right so this is a blast you need to know how to differentiate a myeloblast from a lymphoblast so if you would have attended my class right i tell you that what is a myeloblast right it's a large size cell right with high nc ratio yes but m for myeloblast so you need to remember that comparatively the amount of cytoplasm is more right so here the amount of cytoplasm is more compared to a lymphoblast number two yes there are presence of r rods r rods will be present number three presence of nucleoli will be more so more nucleoli more cytoplasm finer chromatin can i say more finer chromatin right so these are the features that will help you make a diagnosis of a myeloblast compared to a lymphoblast where the amount of cytoplasm will be scanty the number of nucleoli will be less and the chromatin will be fine but it will be less fine can i say it will be a more of condensed chromatin signifying the lymphoid lineage now students another very important feature is the presence of these r rods right r rods are the needle shaped structures found in the cytoplasm of myeloblast which is a definitive sign right definitive sign of myeloid lineage so can i say a large size cell which looks like a blast with high nc ratio if r rods are present i can easily make a diagnosis of myeloblast if i can see r rod i won't have any doubt that whether it is a lymphoblast or a myeloblast so yes a patient coming to you with the presence of myeloblast in your peripheral smear so you can easily make a diagnosis of aml easily make a diagnosis of aml students now very very important aml who definition means that at least more than 20% blast should be there right in your differential while you are looking at the peripheral blood picture you are doing the differential more than 20% blast is a prerequisite for the diagnosis of aml right more than 20 percent blast is a prerequisite so aml you will find myeloblast right myeloblast how will you identify a myeloblast a large size cell with high nc ratio more amount of cytoplasm more nucleoli more fine chromatin in the presence of r rod which is a definitive sign now usually more than 20 percent blast is the diagnostic criteria in order to diagnose a case of aml according to who classification what are three criteria where even if the number of blasts are less then also you will make a diagnosis of aml if translocation 15 17 is present translocation 8 21 is present and inversion 16 is present in these three conditions even if the blast count is less than 20 percent you will still make a diagnosis of aml right now translocation 15 17 with an intermediate prognosis is found in case of aml m3 or acute promyelocytic leukemia right which has a higher incidence of dic because of the release of various prothrombotic factors very very important right so in my question yes features of dic more common in aml m3 low platelet count thrombocytopenia why is thrombocytopenia seen because the blast will replace the bone marrow and there will be suppression of the normal erythroid 
lymphoid and platelet count series. So there will be yes, there will be presence of myeloblast, there will be anemia. So patient may come with features of yes, uh, tiredness, fatigue, platelet count will be low, patient may come with bleeding, right? Now the overall the abnormal leukocytes are there, so patient may come with infections. So the answer here will be translocation 15, 17. This is a case of AML M3 or acute promyelocytic leukemia. Now these are the three conditions where even if the blast count is less than 20 percent, you will still make a diagnosis of AML, right? Now translocation 821 normally present in AML M2. AML M2, what would be the hint? It has a high incidence of development of chloroma in the underlying patient. Whereas gum bleeding skin infiltration are a feature commonly seen with AML M4 and AML M5. Right, so easy to make diagnosis, presence of myeloblast. Because of the presence of r -outs, I make a diagnosis of myeloblast with DIC. My answer will be translocation 1517 AML M3. Now next question, students, a young child, 10 year old child presents with hepatospinomegaly with jaundice. Marked cells were seen. So we will quickly have a look at the cell because the cell was enough. This was an image based question because the looking at the image, you could make the diagnosis. So you can see these cells, right? These marked cells, what do you see? These RBCs are smaller than the surrounding RBCs, number one. So these RBCs are smaller than the surrounding normal RBCs and they lack the central pallor. Normal RBCs are 7 to 8 micron in diameter. Normally the RBCs are 7 to 8 micron in diameter. Number two, they will have the central pallor which will constitute about one third of the diameter right but here you can see that the size is smaller and they lack the central pallor because of which mchc is increased so this is an example of microspherocyte right microspherocyte now what is the condition which is most commonly associated with finding of spherocytes it is Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is the most common cause. Second most common cause will be hereditary serocytosis. Right student? So a patient coming to you with the presence of spherocytes, what is one test you would like to do in order to differentiate these two causes? Coombs test. Coombs test positive, your answer will be autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Coombs test negative, your answer will be hereditary spherocytosis. So Coombs test is used to differentiate between the two very important common causes of serocytes in your peripheral blood picture and apart from that yes hepatosplenomegaly can be there jaundice can be there so features of hemolysis these features can be seen but it was predominantly an image based question smaller rbcs lack central pallor microspherocytes most common cause autoimmune hemolytic anemia coombs test positive answer will be autoimmune whereas if coombs test is negative answer will be hereditary spherocytosis a chronic smoker with lung carcinoma showing large atypical malignant cells with the presence of necrosis along with the hint in the question hypercalcemia is the most common paraneoplastic manifestation developing in squamous cell carcinoma right squamous cell carcinoma now it is more common in smokers so hint number one towards development of lung carcinoma yes smoking second feature will be large malignant squamous cells how will you identify this squamous lineage yes presence of intercellular bridges intercellular bridges and number two the presence of keratinization keratin flakes so these two features help you make a diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma hypercalcemia is a rare manifestation with small cell carcinoma whereas it is the most common manifestation with squamous cell carcinoma Next, a 65 year old man went for the medical examination. So, an elderly man going for a medical examination with the PBF showing elevation of lymphocytosis. What would be the investigation of choice? So, let me have a look at the image and you can see that yes, lymphocyte count is increased, right? But very important finding you should not miss students is the presence of smut cells or basket cells or parachute cells. So these smudge cells are a finding which will help you make a diagnosis of CLL. They are seen because these lymphocytes are highly fragile. So when I am making the peripheral blood picture, they easily break down, right? So they are formed due to the loss of which intermediate filament? Loss of vimentin. 
Now, do smart cells have a prognostic significance in a patient of CLL? Yes, more than 30% smart cells have a better prognosis in case of CLL. Now, how does a patient of CLL present, right? Usually, patients of CLL come for some other surgeries, come for regular medical examination, probably cataract, hernia, because they are elderly people. Then they go for this CBC and you find out that there is a high TLC with absolute lymphocytosis. Yes, absolute lymphocytosis in a patient of CLL is more than 5000. More than 5000 per cubic millimeter. So, this is the diagnostic criteria that in my patient, absolute lymphocytosis, absolute lymphocyte count should be more than 5000 per cubic millimeter. Apart from that, flow cytometry is an investigation of choice and you need to differentiate it from mantle cell lymphoma. In case of CLL, it is CD5 positive, CD23 positive. Whereas in case of mantle cell lymphoma, It will be CD5 positive but CD23 negative, right? So, can I say the investigation of choice will be flow cytometry? It is a diagnosis usually made on peripheral blood film where I will see the presence of increased lymphocytes. How do you recognize lymphocytes? Yes, they are small cells with condensed chromatin with scant thin rim of cytoplasm. Absolute lymphocyte count more than 5000 per cubic millimeter. And very important finding is the presence of these smudge cells or shadow cells or parachute or basket cells which are formed due to loss of momentum which do have a prognostic effect as well. So my answer will be investigation of choice in this case will be flow cytometry. An elderly man with hepatitis B and characteristic spike in dome appearance. Now this was enough for me to make a diagnosis of membranous nephropathy. Spike and dome appearance seen on better visualized with the help of silver stain. Now why is this spike and dome appearance seen? Because so this is spike and dome. So this spike is formed due to the laid down basement membrane material in between these electron dense deposits right in between these electron dense deposits. So membranous nephropathy is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in elderly patients. Whereas most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in adults will be FSGS. Whereas most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in case of children will be minimal change disease. Right? So my answer from an elderly man, common cause can be membranous glomerulonephritis. Hepatitis B is one of the important pathogenetic factor for development of membranous glomerulonephritis. Right, so students, what are the causes of membranous glomerulonephritis? Number one will be, number one is it is idiopathic in up to 80% cases it is idiopathic. Other causes can be infections and malignancy. What infection? Hepatitis B, hepatitis C, very important. Right, malignancy, CA, colon commonly associated. So, these are the factors which may lead to development of membranous glomerulonephritis. So, here elderly man come due infection with hepatitis B, characteristic spike in dome appearance. Your diagnosis will be membranous nephropathy. Next, we will see. Yes, so here we will see this is the past stain. If you remember P4 past, P4 pink. So there is thickening of basement membrane seen on thickening of basement membrane which can be seen on light microscopy. Membranous thickening of basement membrane which is better visualized with the help of special stain past, P4 past, P4 pink. And on immunofluorescence you will see the granular immunofluorescence pattern. This characteristic silver stain will show spike and dome appearance, spike and dome appearance. Now a child presented with hepatosplenomegaly and petechial rash, urine examination will show owl's eye appearance in this case. Now urine examination, owl's eye appearance, what will you see? You can see that yes, this is the owl's eye appearance. Let me zoom into the image and you can see that this is Owl's eye appearance, but the presence of basophilic viral inclusions can be seen. So these are basophilic, yes, basophilic inclusions seen on in both the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So this is CMV infection, which usually presents with 
very important periventricular calcification a very important finding in case of cmv infection right so yes hepatosplenomegaly can be there petechial rash can be there so answer is cmv now in hodgkins lymphoma also students in case of hodgkins lymphoma rss they also show owl's eye appearance but an important finding will be the presence of eosinophilic nucleolus only inside the nucleus right here it will be eosinophilic whereas CMV it will be basophilic it will be nucleolus inside the nuclei now these inclusions viral inclusions will be seen both inside the nucleus and inside the cytoplasm right so here CMV it will show presence of basophilic inclusions inside the nucleus inside the cytoplasm whereas in Hodgkin's lymphoma classical RSS will show the presence of owl's eye appearance with eosinophilic nucleolus right. Now in storage disorders you can find hepatosplenomegaly but here you will not see this owl's eye appearance rather you will see the macrophages distended with the abnormal material accumulated inside. Hoppe's infection what will you see you will see multinucleated cells multinucleated cells which will show molding right next a five year old child presented with cola colored urine mild facial puffiness history of impetigo now till here you can easily make a diagnosis of PSGN so young child pediatric child P for pediatric P for PSGN it is the most common cause of nephritic syndrome in case of children Another thing, what do children like? They love drinking cola. So, there is cola colored urine due to hematuria. Cola colored urine, very important. Another thing, what do children like? They like looking at the stars in the sky, right? So, starry sky pattern seen on immunofluorescence. These are the two features which you need to remember about PSGN, right? A young child coming with cola colored urine or hematuria complaint along with it mild facial puffiness. And due to history of skin infection, impetigo, history of skin infection, again makes a diagnosis of PSGN. So yes, it was PSGN, but very important students, PSGN usually resolves in a time period of 3 to 6 weeks, right? So Harrison says that PSGN usually resolves, it's a self-resolving disease which resolves within 3 to 6 weeks. But in very few cases, there can be increasing serum creatine. So less than 1% cases may develop renal failure, right? Less than 1% cases may develop renal failure. Usually renal biopsy is not indicated in making a diagnosis of PSGN because but here the patient is coming with increasing serum creatinine. We need to rule out the underlying developing RPGN. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis which can show the presence of crescents. Right, normally a patient of PSGN will show the presence of subepithelial humps, but here what is the indication of doing biopsy here because the serum creatinine is increasing, patient is undergoing renal failure or into a broader spectrum of RPGN, so there will be presence of crescent formation. A 5 year old child with bleeding per rectum and rectal polyp showing colonic epithelium with mucin. So this is an example of juvenile polyposis which is a hematomatous polyp right. What is hematomatous polyp that is there is increased proliferation of glands at the normal location whereas presence of ectopic tissue at a certain site then your answer would have been choreostoma but here it is not the ectopic site it is a normal site where the glands are undergoing proliferation because of which the patient is coming with per rectal bleeding right so your answer will be hematoma a child presented with anemia and bony pain crumpled tissue paper appearance was seen now students even if a long case scenario was given finally you had to make a diagnosis simply looking at the image or listening to the term crumpled wrinkled tissue paper appearance right this is a case of gorgeous disease how does a patient present to you right a young child presenting with bony pains anemia and hepatosplenomegaly because the entire underlying bone marrow is infiltrated with these abnormal gaucha cells 
there is depression of the normal hematopoietic element so there will be anemia right then because the bone is affected right the patient is prone to develop pathological fracture so bone pain and underlying organomegaly right that will lead to hepatosplenomegaly now on microscopy you can find a gemsa stain or a pass stain showing these large abnormal macrophages which are distended right so you can see here that they are large number one they are large in size large size macrophages where the nucleus is displaced towards the periphery and this bluish gray cytoplasm is distended with sphingolipids or glucocerebroside accumulation giving this wrinkled tissue paper appearance right so this is due to the deficiency of glucocerebrosidase that will lead to accumulation of substrate glucocerebroside or sphingolipids inside the macrophages and the patient will come with anemia bone pain or hepatosplenomegaly Right, students, so a 40 year old patient came with 20 years history of working in cement industry. He developed mesothelioma. Now, when you listen to this term mesothelioma, you should not have had any doubt, right? Mesothelioma is the most specific, most specific malignancy to be developing in a patient of asbestosis, whereas most common will be adenocarcinoma only, right? But if I ask you, most specific mesothelioma develops within a time period of around 10 to 20 years after asbestosis right so yes cement industry long chronic exposure to cement industry development of mesothelioma your answer will be asbestosis silicosis increases risk of which infection tuberculosis due to impaired clearance of macrophages bagosis is due to inhalation of sugarcane industries right in sugarcane industry worker biocinosis due to cotton hump exposure Next, identify. So, it was a very simple histological question, right? So, here you can see these are the glomerulus, right? So, these are the glomerulus and this is the renal biopsy, right? Now, next we will see these are the islets of Langerhans. So, you can see these pale nodules compared to the surrounding area. They are the pale nodules in the, yes, these are the islets of pancreas which are responsible to cause secretion of hormones, right? So, this is islet of pancreas, you can see comparatively they are pale nodules and these are the islets of pancreas. So, these are the hazel corpuscles present in the thymus medulla. Next, these are the serous demilunes. What do you mean by demilunes? It is a crescent or moon shaped structures. So, here you can see in case of mucus vacuoles, here the, this particular area becomes serous demilunes which is present in a case of mixed salivary glands. Which of the following has good prognosis? Yes, in Birat scoring, what will be, which of the following will have good prognosis? ER positive present will have a good prognosis. They will respond to treatment, good prognosis and good response to treatment. Whereas KI67 or mitotic, it indicates the underlying proliferation, more the proliferation, more the mitotic figures more will be worse will be prognosis so it is associated with worse prognosis brca1 right it is associated with triple negative phenotype that means again erpr negative her2 negative so again it will have a poor prognosis p53 present poor prognosis right students so what will we are having a good prognosis er positive good prognosis and good response to treatment a child presented with golden brown ring around the cornea, what would be your next investigation? So, this is favorite question of examiner. You can see this KF ring. KF ring is present in up to 90 to 95 percent patients who have neuropsychiatric manifestation in Wilson's disease. Whereas only 50 percent patients with hepatic disease will develop the presence of KF ring. So, this is a case of Wilson's disease. Patient will come with neuropsychiatric manifestations. There is excessive copper, right? So, excessive copper, see copper deposition will be increased. Urinary copper excretion will be increased. But serum celluloplasmin levels will be decreased. So, this is the investigation you would like to do in a patient of Wilson's disease. What are the other hints they give in a Wilson's? Yes, patient presents with sunflower cataract and presence of KF ring because the copper levels are increased, the serum celluloplasmin levels will be decreased. An African child presented with jaw swelling, bone marrow aspiration findings are shown, what translocation is involved? So, let me have a look at the image. You can see here, these are the large size cells with abundant royal blue cytoplasm. 
with the presence of vacuoles inside right so this is a case of burkitt's lymphoma burkitt's lymphoma what translocation b and 8 look similar so it is translocation 814 which is associated with burkitt's lymphoma so an african child with jaw swelling because the mandible is the most common site so this is the usual presentation which is present in case of endemic burkitt's lymphoma usually positive for which infection ebv positive right so African child jaw swelling because mandible is the most common site and another hint will be the characteristic presence of these cells with abundant royal blue cytoplasm with the presence of vacuoles inside. The translocation will be translocation 814. Sweat chloride levels will be our important screening tool in newborns in case of cystic fibrosis which occurs due to defective CFTR gene present on chromosome 7 right because this transport is the iron transport channel classically the patient will present to you yes a newborn is brought by the mother with the complaint of salty sweat so mother will say that the sweat of the newborn is high is very salty this is because of increased chloride levels so your sweat chloride levels will be elevated in a case of cystic fibrosis right so salty sweat newborn is the hint towards cystic fibrosis which develops due to CFTR gene mutation present on chromosome 7, right? Next, a child presented with fever, meningeal signs, headache, neck rigidity, vomiting, right? CSF findings will show, this is such a simple question with the presence of excessive neutrophils in the CSF with the low sugar and increased protein, your answer will be pyogenic meningitis right pyogenic meningitis in viral meningitis sugar level csf sugar level usually remains normal right tubercular meningitis what are the classical findings yes protein levels will be highly elevated highly elevated along with that the presence of low csf glucose yes but but it is characterized by presence of lymphocytic pleocytosis yes in early cases they can show the neutrophilic infiltration but the classical presentation is lymphocytic pleocytosis very high level of lymphocytes normally lymphocytes are always less than 5 right per high power field but here pleocytosis lymphocytic pleocytosis is a feature of tubercular meningitis right so even just looking at the feature of neutrophil in the CSF you should make a diagnosis of pyogenic bacterial meningitis which is characterized by this turbid CSF gross appearance. So with this student we finish the NEET PG 2023 pre-call.